G'day guys and welcome back to the latest tutorial from Just The Basics. Today, it's time for our yearly tutorial on this channel. So, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Look, I apologize. It's been such a long time since we've made a video, but we've got more exciting things upcoming. You know what? Forget the whole introductory spiel, but welcome back to a brand new episode where we're going to look at creating this realistic Rocky Canyon that you see now. This is super simple and only takes a few minutes once you understand the process involved. So that's what we're going to look at breaking down and covering today. Let's jump straight in. To follow along, make sure you're using the latest version of Blender, which is Blender version 3.1. If you don't have it installed, you can go download it for free now from blender.org. Once you've done this, let's open up a new project inside of Blender. And we're going to start by left clicking and dragging to select both our default cube and default light and then deleting them, sadly. Next, let's run through a few settings to make sure that your project has the same settings as mine, so that way it'll be easier to follow along. First of all, make sure your render engine is set to Cycles. By default, it'll probably be set to Eevee Render Engine, but we're going to be using Cycles as this has much more photorealistic lighting available for us. Also, enable GPU Compute if you have that option. If you see this box grayed out, what you need to do is just navigate to the top left-hand corner, select Edit, and navigate down to Preferences, and then you should see system down here, third from the bottom, and enable either CUDA or optics render devices and just have a tick next to your preferred GPU. That is if you have a graphics card that is compatible with these versions of Blender. While we're here in our preferences, we might enable two add-ons we're gonna need as well. So let's go to the add-ons tab. And the first one is the Node Wrangler. If you're familiar with Blender, you might have used the Node Wrangler before, but if not, it's a super speedy tool that I was actually introduced to by some of you in the comments. It just helps really save so much time when working with some aspects of Blender, which we'll touch on later. So if you haven't already, put a tick next to that to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. The other add-on we want to enable, which is the most important one to accomplish this tutorial, is the ANT landscape, which is another noise terrain landscape. Put a tick next to this, and once we've done that, let's just navigate to the bottom left-hand corner and select this little three option icon here and select save preferences. That way we don't have to continue enabling these every time we open up a new version of Blender. Now we can close that down. And one other setting I'd like to change is just here in my world properties. I'm gonna make sure that my color is set to sky texture. This will enable us to use the Nishida sky texture, which is built into Blender and provides beautiful realistic lighting when creating our scene. Now that we've done everything we need to to set up our project, let's begin creating this canyon. And we're going to do that by selecting Shift A, and then under Mesh, we're going to navigate down until we see Landscape. Now this option has appeared since we enabled the ANT Landscape add-on. Just select that, and now you'll see it's generated a small mountain. Now, we don't really want a small mountain for this scene, we want some big rocky canyons. Fortunately for us, if you navigate down here to the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see there's a little arrow with our another noise tool box. We can click and open up to open up our settings. Now under here, we have some operator presets. These are different noise settings that can create different styles of terrain. And fortunately for us, there's one there that's set as canyons or canyon. So what we can do is we can just have a flick through these and see which one looks the best which one is going to look the most realistic for our scene. Personally, I like just Canyon. I think that's far more realistic as it's a bit more detail and definition. So that's all I'm going to do. And I'm not going to change any other settings. So once I've set that to Canyon, I can just click away and select my Canyon landscape and scale this up. Now I want this to be significantly bigger. So I'm going to scale it up, say something like 50 times larger than it was by hitting S, 5, 0, and Enter. So scale, 50, Enter. Once we've done that, we've basically created our scene. There's only one more thing we need to do to tweak the geometry of this terrain a little bit. And we can go to our Modifier tab, select Add Modifier, and I'm going to add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. What this does is it just smooths out our mesh by adding in some more geometry to it. And I'm going to turn the levels viewport from one to two to match the render viewport as well, just so I see what it's going to look like in the final render. 
And that looks great. You can see the difference with it off and on. It just smooths everything out and gives us much more geometry to work with for our next step, which is texturing and displacement. So this is really the selling point of this tutorial. And to accomplish this, I'm gonna be using a texture from Quixel Bridge. Now I know not everyone likes using Quixel Bridge with Blender because it's actually a free tool to use with Unreal Engine, but that's what I'm gonna be using for this tutorial. You don't have to use the exact same texture to be able to follow along with the same steps. In fact, if you want to use some free textures, cause I know Blender is completely free. So we like being able to use free resources with it. And there's some fantastic community resources that are available such as Polyhaven, which has a texture setting. And here you can find lots of fantastic textures and also 3D Assets One, which simply sources all possible community sites that feature different textures that are free to use in your own project. Along with Blender Kit, which is built into some versions of Blender, or you can go to their website to install as an add-on. So wherever you would like to source your texture from, go ahead and source it from there now. I'm gonna jump back to Quixel Bridge. And if you're not sure how to use Quixel Bridge with Blender, I'm gonna be putting up a video soon on how to do that. So I'll link it in the comments when it's available. But for now, I'm just gonna search Canyon to bring up some nice Canyon surface materials and spot up a few 3D assets. So I'm just gonna narrow it down by typing surface. And here's the one I'd like to use, Massive Canyon Sandstone Cliff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and export that to Blender and I'll let that import, brilliant. So now I can jump into Blender and just simply selecting my material section, I can select this material drop-down box and activate this massive Canyon sandstone texture. Now, if you're using a custom texture or a different texture, what you need to do here is navigate to the top left-hand corner until you see this crosshair and then left-click and drag to the right to split your screen. Then let's go ahead and navigate to the left till you see that crosshair and left-click once more, but this time drag down to split our screen in half again. And I'll just pull that out by holding over this line here. And I'm gonna change these viewports to the first one being a shader editor and the second one being the UV editor. Now, this is just my preferred workflow setup for animating textures. But of course, we do have the shading and the UV editing tab, which can each be used for these features. But once again, this is just what I think is a nice simple way to do it. And what we can do, if we wanna add in a custom texture, Let's just go ahead and select new texture. And then with our principal BSDF shader there, which will be automatically enabled once we select add new texture, we can hit control shift T. And this is using our node wrangler. So this is a shortcut. Just remember that T stands for texture. So, and then once we put in control shift plus T, it allows us to navigate to a folder. So for example, we can navigate to our folder where we save all our textures. And then just select one texture. All we need to do is just go ahead and select all the textures in that folder and select principal texture setup. And then Blender will automatically put them into the necessary locations to apply that texture correctly. So that's what you can do if you're using a custom texture that you've downloaded yourself. Once again, for myself, I'm just gonna be using this Massive Canyon Sandstone texture. So let's jump to rendered view now and just have a look at how this is appearing. And it looks fantastic. I'm kidding. If you're familiar with Blender, you probably realize we need to unwrap our mesh. So I'm gonna hit tab to enter edit mode and I'm gonna hit U which stands for unwrap and just select unwrap. So this will now project our 3D mesh as a 2D image. So that way Blender knows how to interpret the 2D texture and where to apply it on our scene. I'm gonna tab out of edit mode again, just to have a look at this. And there's a couple of things I'm gonna to need to change with my texture setup. This is just due to a bug with Quixel Bridge is importing currently. So I don't think this will apply to future tutorials. Or if you're watching this in the future, you probably won't even need to do this. But if it's not fixed, well then here's how to fix it. We just need to go ahead and move our normal map down to our normal box. We also need to change our roughness map, which is here. You can see it says roughness and move that to our roughness box. And also for some reason, clear coats enabled. I'm not sure why, but Blender updated to the 3.0 series and added a few extra slots to this principal BSDF shader. So I think that's what's thrown out the importing of some texture programs into Blender. But now that we've done that, we can see our texture is applying to our scene, but it's way too stretched or small. 
for what we want. So let's go tab back into edit mode. And here's where our UV editor comes in handy. This UV editor box or window allows us to resize our image texture onto our canyon. So let's just go hover over this orange clump here, which represents our model as a 2D image and hit S to scale. And I'm gonna scale this up 20 times larger by hitting two zero and then enter. And then what I'm gonna do is tab out of edit mode and just have a look at that. But I think that's gonna be looking pretty good. Awesome, that looks fantastic so far. The next thing I need to do is just add in another texture what that is, is a displacement texture. To do that, I'm just gonna select one of the textures that's already imported and hit Shift D and drag it down here. Then I'm gonna select this little folder icon and open an image from the existing folder. And I'm gonna select this displacement.exr image and select open image. I just changed the color space back to non-color because everything that's not contributing to the color of our material should be set to non-color. And let's just drag this final material output out a bit further and then connect this displacement up to the displacement slot on our material output. Now nothing's happened straight away. That's because we need to give a bit of a translator, if you will, in the form of a displacement node. So just search displacement by hitting shift date, selecting search and search displacement. And then we can put that in there. And I'm just gonna select this color to height. We can see that still nothing's changed. That's because there's one other setting we need to enable. Here in our material settings, we need to scroll down until we see the option settings. And just under settings, we need to change surface displacement from bump only, which is our normal map providing some subtle fake bumps to both displacement and bump. And you're gonna notice as soon as I click this, there's a drastic difference. Our scene has gone crazy. What we need to do is we need to turn the scale down. Our scale is currently set to one. So let's try 0.02, something much smaller, but something that should still provide a nice amount of detail. And let's have a look at that. That looks much better. It might still be a bit too much though. So I'm gonna turn this down to 0.015, just something a little bit softer. And there we go. That looks much nicer. Now, there we have it. Straight away, we have a pretty cool looking canyon scene. It probably could look a little bit better with a few tweaks. So let's just go make a few tweaks to some other areas of our scene. The first one is the lighting. So with our lighting, I find this provides a really big impact on how believable the scene looks. For example, I personally like doing this as like a bit of a sunset shot. So if I turn the sun elevation down to something like five or 5.5, you can see that it looks like a really cool sunsets coming through, casting a bit of light and shadows onto our Rocky Canyon. Up here in our render properties, we can enable this box color management and change the look to high contrast or very high contrast to make it pop a little bit more. It just brings out a bit more richness in the color. I'm gonna hit zero as well on my number pad to go to my camera and just scroll until my camera views uh, fills the scene. And then here under my Apple properties, I'm just gonna select render only to region. That way I'm not using my graphics card more than I have to. And I'm gonna change the resolution to 4K because I like rendering in 4K. I think it just makes a big difference in the final quality. So the resolution for that is 3840 by 2160. And then I'll hit N just to enable my right-hand side toolbar. And just under view, I'm gonna select lock camera to view. What this does, just hitting N to remove that little toolbar. But what that does is enables you to scroll around and now your camera will follow you wherever you move. So once we've done that, we can move our camera to a set location that we think looks pretty nice. I think about here looks pretty good. The reason I say that is because I'm gonna change one other aspect of my camera. And this is a really cool feature that Blender has and most animation programs have, is the ability to change the focal length of your camera lens. So normally in real life, you might have to spend a lot of money to get really good lenses, but in Blender, they're all free and you can swap them out as easily as you like. So let's turn this up to something crazy from like 50 mil to 200 mil, something oh, probably a bit too zoomed in. Let's try 100 mil. That's a bit better. I'm just going to move this around until I get a bit of a shot that looks kind of cool. And while I'm here, my camera options, I'm just going to enable depth of field as well. And what I'll do, I'll turn the f-stop down to 0.1 so I can really tell what my camera is focusing on. I sort of want it to focus on maybe this rock 
immediately close to camera. So I'll just adjust that so I can see that that's in focus. And I'll turn it back to two, I think. And that looks pretty good. There we have it. Our scene looks pretty great like that. Like I said, there's lots of options you can play with. Something I think can be really cool as well in the world lighting settings is changing the altitude. I find if you turn this up really high, something like 13,000, it creates this really bright, strong contrasted color that you saw on my project when I first opened it. One other final thing I should mention is that in your render properties, just under sampling, make sure your samples are set to something like 50 because that's all you really need and just enable this box denoising. Once you've done that, your render will come out nice quality instead of taking an insane amount of time, but it will still look really good and won't take too long. So when you're happy with it, you can hit F12 to render or just select render and select render image. You can see the shortcuts F12, but that's it. So everyone, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for all the comments and all the appreciation that's coming through the community. I really, really do appreciate it. And thanks for watching this video. I can't wait to see you in our next episode. So until then, stay safe and have a great day. Bye.